Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? If you can't hear me, please let me know so I can fix it, but everything should be uh, good to go. Whoops. Hello, Laredo is back once again. How you doing today, Laredo? Um, Laredo says, glad to see that you made it on time. So Adria is also here. Hey, Adria, how's it going? Adria says, oh, let me show everybody. <laughs> Adria says, hey, didn't think I was going to make the live stream on time tonight. Decided to jump in the shower. Not literally, of course, uh, before the live stream started. Okay, glad you could make it. Welcome out to Harley's Piano Channel. So I think it's your first time out today, Harley. A welcome, and feel free to come back anytime. We meet Fridays and Sundays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hey, Sandy's here. How you doing today, Sandy? I believe you are new as well. If not, I apologize and welcome out. Again, you can uh, feel free to join us when we meet on Fridays and Sundays. Feel free to come back at any time. Okay, so we're at 8 o'clock already. We got Carol Christensen here. Oh, once again, everybody, one of our great students. And all right, hopefully everybody is having a, a great night. I am doing pretty well. It's kind of cold today, which is disappointing. I'm ready for the warm weather, which hopefully, according to the weather report, is coming um, this Friday-ish. This is next weekend. So hopefully it actually happens. Hey, Cold Dust as well. I actually caught one of these. Uh, welcome out, Cold Dust. Happy you could join us out today. Okay. I think I'm going to get the Facebook stream started, so everybody just give me a minute for that. And um, very soon after that, we'll get started with our full lesson here. Barbara's back once again. Welcome out, Barbara. Okay, let me just kind of go through all the stuff I have lined up. Okay, that's good. There we go. Okay. Hey, Tanny's back again. How you doing, Tanny? Okay, we're almost there. Thank you for your patience. And here we go. There we go. Hello, students. Welcome out to our live stream. If it's your first time out, if you're on YouTube, please subscribe. If you're on Facebook, like our page because we got new lessons coming out every Friday and Sunday live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So let's just get right on to what we have going on today. Okay, and I want you to share this lesson because the more students we have in attendance, the better of a discussion we're going to have, the better of a lesson, and the, the more we will all learn. So share us on your favorite social media right now, and it will be a big, big help. Okay. Okay, students, today I'm going to give you some helpful tips on playing and reading notes with both hands at the same time. And the first tip I have for you is spend ample time mastering each clef separately. If you're new to reading music, it is a mistake to begin reading notes uh, but with both clefs right away. Of course, unless you're some kind of prodigy, which most of us are not. I know I am not. I have a lot of students come to me and say, I'm really having a lot of trouble, you know, reading with both hands together. I really, um, you know, I'm getting confused between the notes. And they've only been learning piano for a couple of weeks. And it really takes time really for 
it's really easy to understand how to read music, at least in my opinion, and, and you might struggle with it more than I do, but where a lot of students I find go wrong, even if they're really good at reading music, is if they start learning the treble clef and practicing the treble clef and bass clef at the same time right away, they'll start to confuse the lines and spaces between each clef and start to mix them up in their head. So what I recommend you do is master that treble clef master that bass clef separately first to where you can identify any line or space on each and then start to put them together. It doesn't make much sense to do that right away. All right, let's get on to the next tip I have for you. Which is a read notes from the bottom to the top and you always want to do it, do it like this. You always want to have that as a consistency. Now why am I making you do this or why am I telling you about this? Well this is for the simple fact that this will help alleviate confusion because what happens to a lot of students is they will try to read notes um, and it's like their methodology is all over the place. So let me get my pen out here with us. Okay, hopefully it'll let me do it. No, of course not. Why not? It always lets me do it. All right, give me a second and then I'll have it ready. I just got to open it up with a different program. Okay, here we go. This will let me do it. Okay, so where a lot of students go wrong is they don't really have a methodology to how they are reading their notes between both hands. You know, they might read this note first. They may say, okay, that's a B, and then this one is, uh, you know, a D, and then this one's a G, and then what was this one again? I totally forget. So always from the bottom to the top, you want to be reading these notes. It also really helps with chords, since chords are often always read, uh, read from the bottom to the top. For instance, I have these three notes here, G, B, and D, all played at the same time. And, you know, it takes a little music theory knowledge in addition to this, but because I can read the notes from the bottom to the top, I know exactly what chord it is. And it'll especially help when you start doing chord inversions as well. So always from the top to the bottom, no, from the bottom to the top. All right, let's talk about the next tip I have for you. which is read notes in columns. This will help you group notes together rhythmically. If the notes fit into a column, that means they are meant to be played at the same time. So let me show you what exactly I mean by this. So here, I'll have both up here, the piano, and actually, you know what? So let's do the sheet music first, and then I'll add in the piano. So you wanna be reading them in columns, up and down, like this. See how all those notes fit into a vertical column? Well, that means that you're going to be hitting all of those notes at the same time. Now keep in mind that some of them may be quarter notes, some of them may be half notes, and you're going to hold them for different amounts of time. Um, but basically using the column strategy, you can figure out when notes hit together. Let's pick out some more. So take a look here. This fits into a column. So therefore, this note and this note are going to be played at the same time. This is going to fit into a column. You know, they're going to be played at the same time. And then you can, after the columns, you can kind of piece out where the notes fit that aren't a part of that and kind of space them out appropriately. So this is how I read music all the time, or one of the things I use is I look at them in columns. It makes it a heck of a lot easier when you do that, rather than just kind of darting around all over the place. So up and down, that's when they're, that's where the harmony is taking place, and that's when they are being played at the same time. All right, let's get on to our next tip. Okay, just give me a second here because I want to erase these. Okay. The next tip, and if you know me, you've known me for a long time, and you're a student of mine, you know about this already. And it's start with uh, easier pieces, and you know this next part. And what? Go fast? No, go slow. Seriously, the number one tip I have in all of music, no matter what it is, is to go slow. I get a lot of students that tell me they are trying to learn something like Moonlight Sonata, 
in their first few weeks of learning. And this is a mistake for, for the most part, unless you're some kind of prodigy again, but you're probably not. And will probably lead to more, it will lead to more frustration than anything. Wait, hold on. <laughs> there we go. It'll lead to more frustration uh, than anything. So if you are trying to read something way above your level and you're just starting out, you don't even really know the basic concepts yet. Um, or like I said, there's a difference in music between under no, learning something and fully understanding it, knowing it like the back of your hand. Almost everything in music you want to know, uh, like you don't even have to think about it. Like what key has five sharps? So that's the key of B. The five sharps it has F, C, G, D, and A. So that's just an example. You know, you want to be able to pull this music knowledge you know, uh, what major chord um, has all three sharps, and that's F sharp major. Okay, so you want to um, build from the bottom. Even if you have to learn nursery rhymes like Itsy Bitsy Spider or something or Happy Birthday, and then work your way up to where you want to go, you don't want to start all the way at the top at the pieces uh, you want to do, as tempting as that may be. And it's actually a lot more rewarding to go from uh, the more from the easier to the more difficult because you'll ease yourself into it and you'll be way way less frustrated when it's time to uh, learn those more complicated pieces. Okay, another tip I have for you is to use intervals, and we've talked about this before in other lessons. And uh, when I post this. Um, you know, the edited version, I will make sure to post a link to the lesson. Uh, the lesson, by the way, if you want to look it up, is how to read music faster. And you'll see my name, my face in the thumbnail, of course. And this lesson is all about how to use intervals to read notes lightning fast. Let me just kind of walk you through it a little bit in case you're new at this. Okay, so an interval is the distance between two notes. So like say from here to here, those bottom two notes. And I know right away, because I know my intervals, that that is a third. Here you go, I'll show you on the piano actually. That this is a third, that they're three notes apart. So anytime you have notes stacked, like see how all three of those left hand notes are, um, are space, 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 and they're evenly spaced? Well, this is always some kind of chord. And um, knowing your chords is really helpful, but this also means, sorry, that's the notes I should have been playing. That also means that the notes are stacked into thirds, and that just makes it a lot easier to figure out what they are. Rather than reading each individual note, like, okay, that first one's a G, okay, that second one's a B, uh, that one's a D, top one's a D. Of course, I'm reading from what? The bottom to the top? Yes, bottom to the top. Um, but that takes a long time, and you might even kind of lose track of where you are. But if I say, okay, all three of these notes right away on the bottom are stacked thirds, uh, let me get you back to where the, you can see the bass clef. They're stacked thirds. Uh, you have this note up here. There's another interval from here to here. And because I know my intervals, I know right away that that's a fifth. So it really helps you give your brain a lot more information to go on to be able to read these notes um, rather than just trying to read everything uh, separately, which just takes a lot more time. All right, let's see what we have here today. Um, okay, so everybody in the chat, I am now going to open up the floor to questions. It was a bit shorter of a lesson today. I knew it wasn't going to take too long to get through because uh, I wanted to be a nice and concise with our tips today. So let me know any tips that you have. And there we go. I'm kind of getting myself better in the frame here. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of all right before. Okay, any questions about reading notes with both hands at the same time? Uh, Carol Christensen comments, uh, one of Tim's best lessons is the one on intervals. However, all of his lessons are good too. I love his tips and learning. Thank you so much, Carol. I appreciate that. Let me show you real quick where, um, because I'm not going to post the link in there right now because that would take too much time right now. So what I'm going to show you is how to find this lesson and what it looks like. Uh, actually, I want to do this. 
Okay. So you go on the good old YouTube and just type uh, how to read music faster. And it should be the first one that pops up in my case anyway. Actually, you know, it should be the first one that pops up uh, for you as well. So there I am. And that's the lesson you want to check out. It's all about reading notes and intervals. And trust me when this can make you a lot better at reading music. Okay, uh, let me take a look at Adria's question or Adria's comment. Okay, uh, Adria says, I think I have the same issue, even though I can read them both separately, of course, but when I put them together, it all turns into mush, and it feels like there is no treble and bass clef. So, uh, of course, you can take some of my other tips uh, to mind with this one. You know, slow it down. Um, you know, use your intervals. Uh, work your way from easier pieces to more difficult ones. It seriously takes time. It took me uh, quite a long time to really feel comfortable playing hands together, maybe 10 years. But you have to keep in mind that I started learning when I was six, so I was like a little kid at first. Um, so as you progress through your teenage years into early adulthoods, your, uh, your early adulthoods, your dexterity and your um, ability to play gets a bit better. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not a prodigy, says Carol. Do not worry, Carol, and neither am I. Rhea says, I envy all of you since we are headed for a chilly winter season here in South Africa. Oh, that's right. So we're headed towards uh, warm weather, and you're headed towards, unfortunately, cold weather. Okay, any tips on, uh, on recommended great books for beginners? Yeah, I do. Actually, I need to make a new lesson on this. I m made a lesson a while ago on it, and it kind of flew under the radar. It probably needed a better title and thumbnail. But, um, all right, let me show you what I recommend. So if you are an adult, and actually I would consider an adult learner. It depends where you're at. But um, I have some students that are 10 years old that can handle the adult book, the adult book level one of Alfred. Uh, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So uh, on Amazon or really anywhere, I also have a link in my description that says recommended keywords and books. You can find all this in there. And actually, if you buy it from that link, it will help out the channel since it's a, an affiliate link. So Alfred Adult Level 1. But I feel like most students that are 14 years and older can handle uh, this book. So even if you're not technically an adult, it's okay. Uh, so we got uh, that one. I would start with Level 1. I would just go through Level 1, 2, and 3. Level two, which I don't know if I have here. Oh, I typed in level one into the box, so level two will probably not appear. So level two is like a green book. So it's right here. And then level three is a blue book. These are really good if you're just starting out because they really walk you through um, the songs in a chron chronological order, I guess kind of makes sense in this case but anyway an order that makes sense if you're just starting out and you want to learn the pieces in order so you make sure that you're increasing the difficulty between the pieces in the correct way so those are the three i recommend you start with there are of course many others but i'm a really a big fan on those three i use those in my personal teaching uh, when i teach students around in my local area and online of course Okay, let's take a look at what we have going on before, or next. <laughs> oh, Real Wednesday fans can't stay today. Uh, sorry about that, Real Wednesday fan, but thanks for stopping in. I appreciate it. Nathan says, hello, team. Hello, Nathan. How are you doing today? Okay. Claire de Lune and Bella's Lullaby, when I started playing the keyboard at the beginning of February 2017, were my two easiest pieces uh, to some degree to learn by ear. I just lack coordination. So, you know, that's very common. So students really fall usually into one or two categories. One, 
Sorry about that. I had to look at something. Uh, one is that they are really good with their ears, but not as good with coordination or maybe their theory skills. And the other, they're really good with theory and, um, you know, theory coordination, they're actually separate things. But every student has strengths and weaknesses. Uh, what I recommend you start doing for basic coordination skills is learning your scales because even though you're playing the, well, it'll actually help you sync up your hands. So what you want to do when you're first starting to learn how to play hands together is you want to look for things where you're playing the same note with uh, the same hand like an octave apart. And scales are perfect for this. And what this helps you do is instead of you know playing something that requires uh, independence between both hands, like that, you're really playing the same thing between both hands. So it really is it develops very basic coordination, getting your hands to play at the same time. You wanna master that first and then move on uh, to other things from there. Okay, uh, Laredo said, or Christian, Carol Christian says, I'm glad you bought his classes. Thank you. He explains everything so well. Edson says, when you're reading both clefs, where do you keep your eyes? Great question. Between the two clefs, or do you focus more in the difficult parts? That's an interesting question. I'm going to actually have to think about that. Actually, let me get everybody back up here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, Fuddy Duddy was not notified. I did send out the email. I'm sorry about that, Fuddy Duddy. Take a look in your junk folder. Some of the automatic emails I've been sending out have not been uh, getting their place. I think I have it figured out, but the email I sent should have done it. Um, so definitely let me know next time if you don't get uh, notified twice in a row. Uh, but I apologize for that. Uh, let's take a look. Um, I'm going to get back to this question here. Edson says, uh, when you're, okay, where do I keep my eyes? Between the two clefts, let me, you know what, let me kind of like read through something. Because, you know, after a while when you learn music, things start to happen automatically, believe it or not. It takes a long time to get there. But eventually it happens. So... You know what? It switches, and you're you're right on both fronts. Um, it was. I look between the both clefts when there's not anything particularly difficult. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm like kind of looking up and down, like a little bit, um, to see if there's anything that pops out at me. Um, but when I got to a more difficult section or a section that I was more likely to mess up on, I concentrated on the hand or the clef that was most likely to give me the problem. And that's something that's going to take a lot of practice uh, before you learn. And like I said, over time, it becomes automatic. So generally, I'm looking um, between both clefts. I mean, not literally, like, exactly between them. But I'm kind of looking, like, to where I can see both of them at the same time. I don't know if that makes any sense. I hope it does. Um, but... You know what I'm. You know what I mean. I'm just not focusing on one or the other. But when I have a problem area, then I focus in. Hello, Gregory is back again. All right. And did anybody else not get notified? I'm kind of curious about that. And are you signed up for the email list? That's another question because uh, YouTube does not always do a great job of letting people know when we are meeting. So what I want you to do, if anybody here hasn't done this already, is go to Piano Lessons on the web.com and what you want to do after that is you want to go to the community page it's right there at the top you click on it and fill out this little box here and then you will get an email update at least you should 30 minutes before we go live all right let me type that into the chat really quick or the link to it so just give me a second and, and uh, keep the questions rolling they're good so far There you go. You should be able to find it right there. Hey, Mamba is back. How you doing, Mamba? Hey, Tim. Been a while. Hello from San Francisco. Welcome out, Mamba. It has been quite a while, a few weeks at least. 
I'm in the need of learning from watching somebody play certain pieces that I need to learn a lot slower. Let me read that again from uh, Marin. Uh, I am in need of learning from watching someone play, okay, certain pieces that I need to learn a lot slower. So uh, th the good news is, is that on the channel here, I'm starting to put out some tutorial videos. In fact, I did box prelude in C major just the other day, and I have more coming out. So if you want to learn from somebody playing me, uh, you can do that. Unfortunately, I'm probably not going to get to every song you want to learn. Um, but I don't know. Let's just type in Bach. Actually, you know, just type in Bach Prelude uh, Lessons on the Web. It should come up, I would think. Yeah, it's the second one here. So it's the one with me and Bach. The one up top is also mine. Um, but that one right there. Hey, Lorea says, I find it that, uh, let me bring this back here. I find it that I usually find it easier to learn when I watch somebody playing by way of supplementing lessons with DVDs for visual presentation purposes of the study material. Okay. Yeah, so the courses on my website, a lot of the, um, the practice examples I give you in the songs to play, I do play along with those. I've looked into DVDs, actually, and DVDs, I think, are more trouble than they're worth to get everything um, formatted, formatted correctly, or I could just do a series that I made for that, um, but it's kind of a time constraint thing, and also uh, it's costly to make them. Marin says, now all I have to do is focus, it, uh, focus now is cool, okay. Now all I have to do is focus. Okay, now is cool. And have I have to master is just coordination. Okay. And that takes time. That's not, and you're not alone. That is true. Uh, did that when I was, had 16 videos. Okay. My Wisconsin Youth Orchestra videos. Once I logged off, it was all fine. You say to read notes from the bottom to the top. So isn't your eyes should be moving as you are reading? Um, at first you are, uh, but like I said, I know how to read music so well that I kind of like, I don't know, I kind of take it all in at once. But I, I understand that if you're first learning how to do it, um, you want to do it from the bottom to the top. And you might it'll take you more time to get through a piece of music that way. But once you're able to process chords, arpeggios, uh, we've talked about this in another lesson, and... Uh, actually, look up a music. Look up a lesson called "How to Read Notes Fast Using the Clusters Strategy," and you've probably seen that before, Barbara, uh, where you're looking at notes in clusters. Um, but when you're first starting out, yeah, always do it from the bottom to the top. And the biggest reason I think for that is one or two is one consistency. Just do it the same way every time. It helps that way. And two, um, it's because of the way chords are are aligned. So you know, if I have a, a chord with E G C. It's always read from the bottom to the top. If I read it from the like middle, top, bottom, I'm not going to know really what um, what inversion that chord is in. Okay, uh, let's see. Rashad says, I'm a senior in high school and play trombone. I played trombone when I was a senior in high school. And welcome out, by the way, Rashad. You're welcome back anytime. I also want to be a musician. Uh, okay, audio engineer and composer. I started on piano. It's the small things like hand-eye coordination, playing the right chords. Yeah, so this is just something um, that you're going to have to work through over time. Hand-eye coordination is like one of the first things that you develop uh, when playing piano. Again, uh, if you haven't started already, Rashad, look up about playing scales. In fact, again, I'm going to point everybody to a lesson if you're interested on um, playing scales, you just type in learn all 12 major scales lessons on the web. And there it is. Mine's the first one. So check that out. That'll get you started playing your major scales. You want to learn those first uh, because that will help you develop the basic coordination. With two hand, John asks, with two-handed scale practice, 
Try playing a different scale in each hand for a variety. That's true, John. So uh, what John means by that is I can play, you know, uh, C major down here and G major up here. Or E major up top. Now it's going to sound strange depending on what scale you're using. Uh, but yeah, you can add that for variety. Another great thing for scales is to practice them in thirds. So I'm playing the, starting on the first note, and I'm starting on the third note up here. Because then the finger crosses happen at different times. So then you're really going to be thinking about it. Uh, okay, Laredo says, how do I easily figure out on uh, which octave I am supposed to be playing? Okay. Let's take a look here. Let me show you. So, and when doing this, I would look at it in terms of where middle C is when starting out. Let's get this in line. Okay, so here we go. So middle C with treble clef is right there. With bass clef, it's right here. They are technically the same note, and they could be joined as such in the middle there, but they leave space uh, really so you can have treble clef notes go down a little bit, left hand, or bass clef notes go up a little bit. So they leave that space in the middle there, even though they're the same exact note on the piano so you can go from there here's the thing to keep in mind is that in the treble clef most of your notes especially if they start on this middle c are from this middle c up this way right so middle c is at the bottom with the bass clef it's the opposite bass the middle c is at the top and then any notes below that go down on the keyboard like that okay so first I recommend you understand where all of the C's are and all the notes are really because it will help so here you go so here's the first C above middle C you can see that there's a pretty big gap here of you know exactly eight notes an octave but it's not real real huge if it was the next C up it would seriously be way up there so you know if you see a gap like that that's way way big you're probably talking about two octaves there so you would know that that C up there isn't here it's up here but the first C I have here is only an octave away it's right here same thing um, it doesn't matter like really what note you start on you know, so take this, you have uh, F and F now. So how far apart are those? Well, f and, and where do I find this first F? Well, remember that middle C is right here, right? There's really not that big of a gap between these two notes. So you know that it's definitely within an octave. So this, this F is definitely within an octave of the, the next C. So it's actually going to be right here. There's your first note there. Therefore, an octave above that is uh, right here. Now it's going to take time for you to really get it like concrete, but use middle C as an anchor and then figure out your starting note and then figure out where you are going from there. Okay, and then same thing with the bass clef. So say I have the bass clef now and you know I have the C right here. Well they're far apart, but they're not as far apart as this, you know, that's really far apart. So that's two octaves. That C would be, you know, not this one, but down there. But the other C would be there. So it's the same thing. Just keep in mind that with the bass clef, that middle C will be on the top instead. Okay, Linda Reed says, welcome. It's a great classroom. Thank you very much, Linda, and welcome back out. Okay. Daniel says, good morning, everybody. Daniel from Barcelona. This is my first time commenting, but my third time here. Thank you. All right. Very, very good, Daniel. Welcome out. You're welcome to come back anytime, of course, and thank you for chiming in. Uh, Tim, do you suggest reading a piece entirely before starting to play it on the piano or not? Um, no, you don't need to do that. 
you might want to do it like measure, like like read through the notes of a measure and then do it if you're just starting out. Uh, but the way I do it is I read as I'm playing, but it, it takes time to get there. But certainly you don't want to read a whole piece uh, first and then start to play it. I would actually read the notes, like say, okay, this note's an E, and then actually play it on the piano. Okay, this note's an A, and then play it in the piano. Because what that'll help you do is that will help you uh, not only identify what letter the note is, but start syncing that up in your mind with where it should be on the piano. Okay, let me get to Barbara again. When I am sight reading, sometimes I will play the chord one note at a time just to make sure I got it right. I mean, it's like sounding out a word. So uh, you mean like C-E-G, things like that. So that's fine. Yeah, so if you're just starting out learning your chords and you don't have them like all in your head right away, you will have to read the notes individually, but you can still use the stack thirds technique to, uh, or the intervals technique to say, okay, all of these notes are a third away from each other. So therefore on the piano, I know that it's gonna be spaced out like this somehow where you're skipping over every other note. Of course, there may be sharps or flats in there that'll make it a little bit more difficult. All right, so hopefully, let's see what else we got here. And if you like tonight's lesson, by the way, and you want to leave me a super chat, it's right below the chat there. It would be very much appreciated and, of course, helps keep the channel going. I'll answer a few more questions here, and then I, I want to tell you about something else. Okay, John says, with two-handed scale, okay, I think I got the, I got to most of them. So I usually figure out on what octave I got to that. Okay, it looks like I got to mostly everybody if I missed your comment up above, or you want me to, you know, you're confused by my answer, uh, let me know. And I'll be happy to help you. All right, so while more comments and questions are coming in, Okay, students, so I really want to tell you about my website, pianolessonsontheweb.com, where I have over 20 courses designed to help you learn a lot more about piano and music. And they can teach you uh, piano, music theory, ear training, sight reading, uh, and pretty much anything else, composition, anything else you need to be a well-rounded piano player and musician. The courses include instructional videos along with uh, sheet music examples, printable notes, assignments, and activities to help you not only learn the topics, but also practice and master them as well. So I highly recommend you go over there and check it out. During checkout, use the code YouTube and you'll get 15% off any order of courses. And then one more thing I want to tell you is if you go to the Buy Courses page, you can get course packs where you can get a collection of courses for a discount, and then you can apply the discount code on top of that. So if you like what you see over here on the channel, you're really going to like what you see over on my website. So I just want to take a second and share that with you. Uh, Carol says, Tim, I used to have so much trouble with reading notes above the staff on the bass clef until your lesson saying that middle C was the same for bass clef and treble clef, then it was easy. Yeah, a lot of people don't kind of, a lot of people don't put that together right away. I'm not sure when I finally put that together. But yeah, once you kind of can conceptualize that they're the same note, uh, you know, treble clef is from middle C up, bass clef is from middle C down, and they join together basically at middle C. It's a little bit easier to wrap your head around. All right, any other questions or comments? Did I miss anybody? And again, you want to subscribe. It's your first time out. Rashad says, I've gotten comfortable with bass clef on trombone. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, but piano has both clefs, so I uh, work on treble. I know, it, uh, I know it, but I don't use it often because I don't need it. I'm still watching YouTube on theory yeah exactly so you want to definitely spend your time practicing just the treble clef notes and what i would do is i would sit down at the piano each day and practice reading some notes and finding them on the keyboard 
you're just starting out, um, something good, uh, if you don't know about this already, is a site called musictheory.net, where it has not only like, le like really simplistic lessons, but my favorite is the exercises because it helps you practice a lot of the things you need to know um, to be good at music, like note identification, uh, interval identification, which we just talked about, scale identification, and chords. So if you do all these, like in the first practice thing, uh, these first five here, then that will really help your note reading. But of course you want to start uh, with the simple note reading and you can click um, where my picture is. There's like a little wheel. You click it and then you can set, you know, where your notes are and everything else. So I recommend you practice that each day. Not only read the note on the staff, but find it on the keyboard as well. Okay, Carol says, you would have thought I would have figured it out before, but I didn't. It was like a light bulb went on. I have so many moments like that um, when I am learning piano. Um, you know, actually from a lot of you, when I'm learning or when I'm teaching the class, somebody will bring up something I never even thought about it that way before. And I've been learning this stuff for a long time now. So it's always like awesome when I'm like, wow, you know what? I'm going to use that in my teaching from now on. Lorena says, my biggest confusion stems from figuring out notes that are three octaves away from middle C. Okay. So let's take a look here. So you have C here, C here. Now here's the thing to keep in mind. Here's the C that's two octaves above middle C. Now if you had... Five, six, seven, eight. The next C up, it would be way up there, right? Well, the thing is, is that you're almost never, ever going to see a C written all the way up there, in most cases. In which case, you'll just have to kind of read this one and then use, uh, you know, your interval strategy to read up an octave. That You can do that as well. Um, but most of the time, you're not going to see one written up there. What you're going to see most of the time is the, the C that I have written here, that's the highest, that's two octaves above. And anything above that, you're going to find this. Let's see where it is. An 8VA symbol. And what this means is you're automatically going to play this note one octave higher than where it's written. So you're not going to see one way, way up there. At least I've seen very few written up that high. They almost always have 8 VA. And say uh, they wanted to make it two octaves higher, it would say 15 MA. All right, everybody give me a second. I need to blow my nose real quick. Okay, I'm back. Luckily, the allergies aren't too bad today, but they're there a little bit. Same thing, Laredo, on the bottom. So when you have a note, so there's one octave below middle C right here. And then two octaves would be right here. And then anything lower than that, you would see, sometimes it actually says 8VA, but here on this program it says 8VB. So you'll see either either one. Uh, and that means one octave, then lower. It should technically say 8VB to distinguish from 8VA, but not always. It's that shirt, says Linda. So Linda is talking about my hoodie, I believe. And actually, she has a shirt as well. If you're interested in getting a t-shirt... Um, I think I forgot to put the link in the description, uh, but I will, I actually, I'm going to put a link on the community page on the website, pianolessonsontheweb.com there. So if you're ever wondering where to find it, you can find it there, but I need to update the page first. Laredo says, thank you, Tim. I'm getting more and more enlightened. You're very welcome. Thank you very much, Laredo. I appreciate that. 
Okay, any other questions this evening? We've got a pretty good discussion going on today. I had fun. I think you did as well. Uh, let me, before we adjourn for this evening, we might go on for a while yet. Uh, we'll see what happens with the questions. All right, I want to show you. So again, back to my website. And if you go back to the community page, I mentioned this earlier. Um, if you want to get notified 30 minutes before we meet, scroll down and fill out this information, and then you'll get an email uh, before we meet. Okay, so the next few weeks, I'll go over what we're talking about and when. So Friday, April 13th. Uh-oh, it's Friday the 13th. How to write and record a backing track. So backing tracks are really good if you're either trying to put together a whole song, like you're trying to record you know, a drum part and then a piano part or something like that. But it's also very good in... And actually, actually, you can use this to just record yourself. But it's very good if you're like playing a um, B-flat blues or something like that and you want to just concentrate on one part rather than doing the chords and everything at the same time. Um, so you, th that will definitely help with that. And then that Sunday after that, we're going to talk about how to play for release. It's going to be a tutorial, a follow along tutorial, as I've been doing, that are in the same style as the ones I've been putting out recently. Uh, then it's the beginner's guide to using the pedal on piano. So uh, the following week, so we'll be, we'll see if we're truly cursed <laughs> with that lesson because something always comes up and I always have to reschedule that one. Okay, Angie says it was a good lesson. Thanks, Tim. Thank you very much, Angie. I appreciate that. Thanks for coming out. And anybody, if it's your first time or you are a returning student, you're always welcome back again. Thank you all so much for coming. Oh, uh, Linda was saying my allergy. Yeah. You know what? I washed the shirt and it's a lot better. So I don't know whether it was a fluke that day that it was just really bad down here in terms of allergies or it was that shirt. But after I washed it, um, it, se it seemed better. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I don't know what was causing it. I did think it was that shirt. Typical. Oh, wait. Um, Sandy says, and practicing the sight reading half an hour every day. That's great. But not much result. Okay. And I don't know if I should practice more or just keep half an hour. So, Sandy, how long have you been practicing the sight reading? Because it can take, uh, if you're brand new to sight reading, it can honestly take um, a couple of months. Within a couple of months, within two months, you should notice a considerable difference. If you're just starting out, maybe you've been doing it for a week or so, maybe over two weeks, maybe even three weeks you might not notice that much of a difference. And you want to make sure that you're sight reading things that are easy, but not so easy that to where you don't need to think about it at all. You know, you just play it easy. Like, uh, say you're used to playing for Elise, and then you're sight reading something like Jingle Bells. Like that. That might be a little too easy. So uh, what I recommend is, okay, um, almost a month. Um, so you should start to rec uh, you should start to see some results soon. I would keep at it though, and what you might want to do. Uh, the other question I have for you is how easy is it for you to get through the sight reading examples? Are you able to get through them on the first try? No mistakes, no real thought. You know your your brain just picks it up right away. Because if that's the case, you're probably doing it too easy. If it's taking you a lot of playthroughs to figure it out, then you're probably trying it too hard. So it could be a difficulty level problem, or it could just be something that um, you're like right on the cusp of seeing results from it, because it definitely takes time, all this stuff. Okay, the radio says, typically, typical, how many scales should one practice on a daily basis? As many of the ones you know. Uh, so honestly, um, if what I would do is if you're learning your scales first, I would first do one thing, learn a new scale. Um, you can learn a scale once a day, maybe even once a week, depending on how fast you can pick them up. But I would be learning something new, and then I would also be practicing through all of the scales that you know up to that point. 
And if you, for some reason, you have a time constraint that day, you don't have as long to practice, you can shorten that a little bit. But for instance, I know all of my major and minor scales and things like that. So it may seem daunting. You're like, well, there's a lot of them, aren't there? That is true. But I know them so well. I mean, I'm not playing the whole thing just to kind of illustrate a point. And there we go, I played through all the major scales already. Now if I played them up and down four octaves, it might have taken, you know, two to three, maybe even four times as long for each scale, but that still wouldn't be a long time because I did it seriously probably in a minute. Um, so four times longer than that would be like four minutes. And then I would do all my minors, that would take me another four minutes. And so within 10 minutes I can get through all of them. I might even be able to do it faster if I did it, uh, you know, up to speed with a metronome. Okay, my note reading has improved since I am doing it at the keyboard. Yeah, you definitely want to be doing it at the keyboard, especially after the first um, you know, week or so learning your notes. Because it's one thing to see a note and be like, oh, that's a G. I know that really well. It's a whole other thing for your brain to say, okay, well, which G is it? You know, Where on the piano is that G? So it really helps to be in front of the piano when that takes place. Oh, Carol Christensen with the $2 super chat. I almost missed it, actually. Thank you so much, Carol. I really, really appreciate that. And um, all the other super chats you give. Of course, you never have to give a super chat, but I always appreciate it very much. Okay, I'm trying to think of anything I need to talk about before we go. You know, we're in the last uh, few minutes here. Hmm. Oh yeah, I need to record like uh, an outro kind of thing. Uh, so let me do that. Okay, students, thank you so much for watching today's lesson. One thing I definitely want you to do is subscribe because we have new lessons coming out on Fridays and Sundays live at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then we also have lessons and updates peppered out in between so you don't want to miss a beat. So thank you very much for coming, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Okay, I'm still here. I was just doing that so when I piece the video together, it makes sense. You're welcome, Sandy. Carol says, great lesson, Tim. Good night. Good night, everybody. Have a great week. I'm going to see you uh, next Friday, where hopefully, at least where I live, it's actually going to be warm outside. <laughs> I can't wait, because I do this thing in a basement. And actually, you know what? It is 100 times better down here than it was back in February and January this year. It was bitter cold. There was, um, there was like a negative five degrees outside one night we had, and I think I had the live stream that night, and it was insanely cold down here, uh, even though like, you know, there's no real heater down here, all the heat goes upstairs. We'll be fixing that soon. Great lesson as always, love the thumbnail uh, from your learning piano as an adult video. Thank you very much. I've been spending a lot more time on the thumbnails and getting them um, better. And I thought that one just kind of fit together real perfectly. Okay, good night, Angie. Good night, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming out. Um, take a look at my courses if you haven't already. And um, yeah, have a great one. Great talking to you. Thank you for being a part of something that means so much to me. And remember, this channel is all about learning, mastering, and sharing piano. So we learn piano. We master it by practicing, and then we share that gift with others, whether it's through our insights, through teaching others, or just by good old-fashioned playing. So thanks, everybody, and have a great night.